G'day Off Trackers. We're back here at Off Track HQ, which means it's time again for... Oh, this isn't the uh, Farmer Wants a Wife audition video. She's been making fun of my flannel all day. I think I look smart. What do you guys reckon? Comment below, is the flannel back in or she out? She's out, long gone. <laughs> So guys, this week we're reviewing the NRX80. This is the brand new fridge to the market by Nometic. Long time coming. They've definitely needed to do it. So we'll be discussing here the figures, what this new one does. I've had it now for about two weeks. Uh, so I'll give you some real world testing. That's why it's taken me a little while to get this video up. I didn't want to rush it. I wanted to actually get some figures for you guys and test it out on a couple of trips. So Ash, what do you reckon? Should we just get straight into the figures or do we do a walk around and show them the, what's changed, the cosmetics? I think you just uh, cut to the chase, so it's the best fridge you've had, <laughs> go buy it. <laughs> Should love it if the videos were that quick, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what we will do, we might actually do some figures for you first, then I'll show you the cosmetic changes uh, and I'll let you know if it actually is a better fridge and where it gets where it is better than the C CFX80. So many different bloody fridges these guys have. NRX, CRX, CFX. So it's hard to remember. Okay, so this one guys, unbelievable difference. Like cannot tell you how much better this fridge is than the outgoing CRX 80. Like chalk and cheese fridges, they look still a bit the same with the back, but I reckon they've beefed up the insulation because it definitely doesn't seem to lose its temperature as quick. The biggest thing they've done is the power consumption. For you guys that saw my video on the CRX80, man, they are a hungry fridge. They, over a 24 hour period, I was doing almost three, three amps every hour. And I was taking my 120 amp hour battery away on a overnight trip. So literally leaving at 7.30 in the morning, getting back uh, 3.30 in the afternoon the next day and I was coming back with 20% left in that battery so pretty much draining my 135 amp hour battery versus this one I've just pulled in from a two night three day trip using it constantly and I did have it on power saving mode I chucked it uh, it was in the car and there was a couple of days where the car got well over 40 so it was pumping and I will show you exactly what battery I have left after those three days. So sitting on 43%, there you go. So to me, that's an unbelievable win to go from coming back after one night with 20% to coming back after two nights with 43. Completely different fridge. This thing is really seriously up there with the most fuel efficient upright fridge on the market. So. I mean, they're claiming, what was it, just under 1.2 amps an hour. Is that right, Ash? 1.19. <laughs> there we go, gotta to, got to be right on. Where I've seen this thing over a 24 hour period, I've had it at 0.8 amps. Over 24 hours, I've had it at 0.1 and just over zero, just over zero point, no, just over one amp. So to go from three down to one and under one amp, Wow, these are bloody good fridges. So what else has changed? They've got a couple of different settings which I'll run into when I actually open the fridge up. But what it basically done, if actually if you come around the back, okay. it is a whole brand new compressor that's on there. Not only is it a different compressor, but it's actually a variable speed, speed compressor. The fan as well has been updated. That's a variable speed fan and any of those that have the old one will remember, will notice that the 240 on this one and the 12 volt comes into the same uh, basically control board where it was separate on the old model. What I've noticed this has done, there's a seamless changeover now from 240 to 12 volt where that was probably the thing that pissed me off the most with the CRX80 was when you had it overnight cooling down on 240 chucked it in your car on the battery to go away, it would go from two degrees up to eight or 10 degrees before it would start cooling back down again. That was a massive flop in my eyes. So massively different fridge. Anybody that's got the old model and you're contemplating whether or not you upgrade, just do it. You will not regret it. It is such a better fridge. Anybody that's looking for a fridge in the market, I would hands down recommend this over the Bushmans. I've had it in 50 degree weather 
inside the car and it's still cold. And that's on power power saving mode, not even the uh, performance mode where it'll perform even better. So with that said, let's get into the aesthetics. Ash, you may as well stay around the back. I originally thought that the back of the fridge was 100% the same, but they've even revamped this. So they've done an actual cut on the bottom to make it fit into cavities better. So that's all new. The cut here is all the same. The dimensions, they've purposely kept the same so that you can literally take the old fridge out, put the new fridge in and not have to do any extra cutting or chalking out. Other things I've added on are these tabs. So I use them for lifting. Uh, there's not much more information I can see on there. I don't know if it's just purely for a delivery point of view then you meant to take them out, but I use them to lift the fridge. I like those. Ash, if we go back around to the front. About the biggest part, the biggest change is this front. I, I don't know, to me, I reckon it's a phenomenal front. I really like it. I would call it what, a, a black platinum? Is that what you'd call it, Ash? I call it like a shiny graphite. Or well, whatever it is, I, I reckon it's really sexy. I like it actually more than just the standard black. What, did, what do you think compared to the Kings and the Bushman just black front? Is this nicer? 100%. And they've also wrapped it around on the edges where the last, the silver front that was on the old Dometic, it was just a fascia that was basically put on there. This is fully wrapped around and really well designed. The latch has been all upgraded. So it still has a lock. You now have a bit of plastic depending on which way you hinge the door. You can slide that across, listen for the click, and now it's locked. That won't actually open ever. You can still get into this side, yes, and lift it, but the seals are too good, it won't open. So fully locked, that's not going anywhere. Full length is your opening. You now have a double latching mechanism. Sorry if it's a bit wet, as I said, I did just get back. So you've got a top latch and a bottom latch now, and I reckon they're both upgraded and a lot better. The biggest thing I can note uh, is the seals. The seals on these are phenomenal. Up there with the Kings and Bushman quality versus the old Dometic ones were, were shocking. As, as I said in my last video, ours actually came bent and buckled from the factory. Again, unfortunately, Dometic has sent another fridge that is a bit destroyed. So this one's missing a bit of the double-sided tape. So we're gonna have to take that to get repaired. Uh, what else has changed? You've now lost the blue plastic. Were you a fan of the blue? No, nah, it looked out of place. I, I didn't mind it, Ash and Lloyd hated it, but I definitely reckon this sort of like gray. It's also a lot thicker and stronger, durable plastic. This shelf can change into four different positions. You've lost your divider and they've gone with these, uh, I don't know what you like, sort of holders. Yeah, they do work a little bit, but on big, big items, if you don't have something else there, unfortunately it does just fall over. So I didn't mind the actual divider. You've now gone to drawers, the pull out, opposed to the flap. The downside to this is obviously, this drawer is not gonna come out unless if you take that drawer out first, but that's not a biggie. They've included these, they're basically calling them sort of lock-in latches so that that can't go anywhere. So if you did want to move it up a spot, you basically just twist it around and there's a screw that you undo and you can pop it out. One thing to note, it is completely different hinging mechanism on here. Uh, you can obviously move it, as I said, but because it's a different hinge, the old door, actually, if you come on this side, the old door, the seal used to finish in line with the actual edge of the fridge where now it quite overhangs. What this has done is the freezer no longer can come out. So you still can get it out, but you just can't get it out very easy. To get it out, you actually have to pull it a little bit, leave the door up, and then take it out on an angle. So not too bad to get out. Getting it back in is a little bit more of a pain. Hopefully I can do this while I'm still recording, not have to cut. So you do get used to it. It's definitely not as easy as the old one. You just slid in and out. That is because of that brand new design door, but I'm willing to trade that off to have this beautiful door. As far as what else has changed. So as, as I said, it does have a lot better power function. I'll chuck up now on the screen. Uh, let me just get my phone so I can show you. I did do a test to see if it cools any faster. 
as it does have these different modes I'll go through in a second. So, so guys, this is the fridge test that I do, where I basically chuck it in the garage where it's nice and hot. I want to test it in Queensland temperatures. So as you can see, the ambient temperature is 38 degrees. The fridge is starting at 27. The battery is on 134 amp hours, 99%. I then came back and checked on the fridge after two hours and it had just hit three degrees, which to me is operating temperature. So that was two hours. The battery was reading 95%, 127 amp, amp hours, which means it used 3.5 amps over that two hours. That's a hell of a lot better than the old CRX. The old CRX used to use 4.5, so an extra amp an hour to cool it down. As I mentioned earlier, these aren't the figures that the fridge runs over 24 hours. This is purely just a test that I do to see how much you can expect to burn cooling the fridge. So I think it was about 10% I burnt on the CRX to get it to cool versus this one's only 5%. So half the amount of power usage. Amazingly, on when you put it on to AC power, onto 240, plug it into the wall, one hour, boom. The, that mode, the performance mode, makes it cool so quickly on 240. And as I mentioned, there's no lag now when you swap it over. So anybody that's buying one of these, I would recommend pre-cooling it on 240. You can literally do it an hour before you go, then chucking it in uh, onto, onto your 12 volt. What we'll do now, we'll run through the actual settings inside the fridge, because this is where there's been a big change. So what they've given you, as if you get in here to the control panel, They've now given you four modes. You have eco mode, which it basically puts the compressor on the second most power hungry mode. And the fan drops down to a lower speed as well. But the biggest change that they've made, the fridge doesn't kick in as often. So the old fridge used to kick in literally every 0.5 to one degree versus this one now, if you have it on that eco mode, it'll kick in every sort of two degrees was what I was getting. And the fan didn't kick on every time as well. So that really has helped keep it down on uh, power consumption. What it also does, you have your temperature control here. It locks you into only the bottom three. You can't put it on really high modes. The next one is basically a quiet mode. This has been more so designed for boats. Funny enough, I never really thought about boats. I didn't think they put these fridges in them, but apparently they do because it's got launched at a boat expo, so it must be really popular. Does that mean we're getting a boat? <laughs> what sort of boat do you want, Ash? Fancy one. I'd rather a jet ski. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> so what this does is it actually drops the compressor right down to its lowest amp draw, which makes it a lot quieter. They also basically brings the fan down to next to no noise, and it spins really slowly. And what this does is means there is really, really minimum draw on amps, like next to nothing. So for you four-wheel drivers, this isn't a wasted mode. Definitely don't think it is. What I would do, if you're the same as me, you've got a portable battery and you need to be really conservative with the amount of amps that you pull. Over night time, once you've finished opening this fridge, put it on that mode and that way it won't cycle anywhere near as much. I believe it's like four degrees before it kicks on again. So it should only turn on maybe three times throughout the night, which means your power draw will be next to nothing. The last mode is a performance mode. So this one is basically only really if you're up in the Northern Territory, Northern Queensland, and it's gonna be really hot because I ran it at 43 degrees on eco mode, handled it no problem, sat on one degrees. When it got above 45, it definitely started to struggle, went to fours and fives. So unless if what you're putting it in is above 45 degrees, middle of summer, you wouldn't use it. But that's where that setting comes in really handy. You can then put it on that, know you're gonna use a lot more current. Still not as much as the old one, only 3.5 watt cycling, but it will put the compressor on the highest mode or will put the fan on the highest mode and it will cycle every basically 0.5 of a degree for the first eight hours, they say. And then it basically figures itself out and doesn't use as much. But for that first eight hours, it's gonna be quite hungry. And then there is also the ability to turn it to freezer. But something we learned, Ash, about it, when it's on freezer, what temperature can it actually get to? Is it minus five or six? Yeah, so on there, I'll put this little booklet up that Dometic sent me. This is the only information you can get at the moment. There's no information guide yet for them. 
So as you can see, there's actually two areas. One is minus five, minus six, as Ash said. Then there's another one, minus seven. Regardless of which one of those it actually hits, that's not cold enough for it to actually work as a proper freezer. Even Dometic themselves on the phone told me for it to be a freezer, minus 10, minus 12. But for, for ice creams, you could put it in there, but for keeping your meat healthy and not getting food poisoning from it, that's not cold enough. So if your idea is to buy one of these and run it as a permanent freezer, the whole capacity, silly idea. Buy a chest fridge and use that or use a drawer fridge. I think we should test it for them. Get a stack of ice cream. And fill it up. Fill it up, see how cold it gets. And, and if the ice cream doesn't stay cold, who gets to eat it all? We can share. Oh, you're going to share with me? And let me guess, you get to pick the ice creams? Yep. <laughs> but in saying that, guys, that's not this freezer. This freezer, when you have it on fridge mode, definitely freezes to proper temperatures and works fine. It's just if you remove that, try and turn the whole unit into a freezer. It's not going to be cold enough. You can also remove that, run the whole thing as a fridge. And, you know, we did that with our 60. With this one, I haven't needed to. Other than that, there's not really much more I need to talk about with the fridge. I think that's pretty much everything ticked off. So as always, guys, like, comment, subscribe. There's been a couple of people actually been nice enough to put messages up thanking me for what I do and letting me know that it's good information and detailed. That, that honestly, for me personally, that means the most because I don't make anything from these videos. Being 100% honest with you, I, I'm lucky to make two bucks per video. So it doesn't fund anything. I'm purely doing this because I like giving back and I like having unbiased opinions on YouTube so you can sit there and know what you're getting yourself into before you waste the money on it. So as always guys, as I said, like, comment, subscribe. It all helps the channel grow. And that's it from me. See ya. Anything from Ash? Nope. Goodbye. No sign off yet. See you guys.